Okay, so for the uh, second half of the class, we're going to talk about the um, the Titanic uh, datasets. Okay, but um, before I start, I want to talk about um, Anthony's uh, questions for um, using random forest on weak questions. So um, you can actually put random forest to solve a regression problem, and the um, intuitive way to think about it is regression. You're talking about finding the magnitude, right? So you're talking about a uh, spectrum. Okay, let's say you have Okay. I'll find a better ruler. Okay. So um, a magnitude is actually a continuous spectrum. Okay. How do you put this as a classification problem? Is you set a bucket. Okay. You say from zero to two is one class. From two to four is another class. So in here you have nine class. Okay. And if you frame the frame the um, questions in a different way, you can easily transform a regression problem to a classification problem. And so you can apply all the model you use uh, in solving a um, magnitude related problem. Okay. It is like you draw a curve in straight line. Draw a curve with straight line? Yeah, like if you have a curve, yeah. rather than having a smooth line, I'm connecting these points with like a straight line. Yeah, if um, so we are saying, let's say you have a curve. Yeah. Okay, regression is try to draw a straight line, and then there will be a lot of errors because these are the errors, and these are the errors. Right. And uh, if you frame it to a classification problem, uh, you can put it to many different classes. Let's say you draw a lot of tiny buckets, and say every every one of these buckets is a class. Okay, then you don't have to draw a straight line. You can simply say, uh, I want to predict this bucket. And this bucket is equal to this magnitude. And I can uh, give you a more visualized uh, example. Uh, random forest. Okay, and you will predict something like this. Okay, because you're drawing like a class on a magnitude. Or it will become something like this. Okay. Does that make sense? So that's uh, intuitively how how you put the two things together. Okay. Um, yeah. This this is the decision tree regress regression which is, I think, is more uh, intuitive. Okay. Um, I didn't really prepare for this, so maybe next workshop I will briefly talk about decision tree reg regression. Okay. Okay, um, everyone got this uh, notebook. Okay, so we're going to talk about a titanic Data sets. Uh, this one is like a classic example for um, solving the um, machine learning problem. So everyone saw Titanic before the movie. Yeah. So do I need to talk about the background? Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay. So um, our problem is we want to predict who will die on Titanic. Okay. There are many fact, many people died in Titanic, and there are a lot of survivors as well. So um, if you think about it, in the movie, uh, Jack died, and Rose survived. And 
there are many factors behind. So Jack is a like poor male in the third class, okay. And then Rose is a female from the first class, and she's quite um, quite rich, okay. So if you think about it, there's a lot of a factor that affects who survived and who um, who died, okay. So the aim is we have we now have a dataset with everyone's background on Titanic, and I also have the ground truth of who survived and who died. Now let's say I have a new passengers going on the Titanic. I have to tell tell him you're gonna die or you're gonna survive. Okay. All right, so I want to do this uh, step by step with you. So this exercise is a lot of like questions and let's solve it together. Okay, so the first thing is we have to understand the data and we have to import the libraries. Okay, there are a lot of uh, standardized library to import. So for sure you need um, pandas. Uh, sorry, import pandas as uh, pd, and then you have to do import numpy as np. Okay, just to um, remind you, pandas is the um, data frame we use, and numpy is how we do mathematics. Okay, and the second question is. Uh, import scikit-learn library for uh, KNN random forest and gradient boostings. Okay, and just how to do a decision tree classifier from sklearn tree import decision tree classifier. Or we can do from sklearn import uh, ensemble. Okay, for KNN I have to <laughs> Google a bit, KNN, SKLearn. Okay. Okay, from SKLearn import, you can do this. Okay, that's how how we do the visualization, uh, how, how we import the um, library. <coughs> and then the next thing is we have to import the library for visualization. Okay, and we have uh, matplotlib, so it's from uh, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Hopefully, okay, no error, that's good. Yeah, any question for you this step? Okay. All right, so let's uh, skip to um, 2.2, which is a uh, set up the helper functions. So normally, um, I don't think you can do this. So these are helper functions just to um, will make your life easier. So you don't have to import input all the uh, plotting um, you know plotting steps yourself. Okay. So I'm just gonna briefly talk about them. So this plot histogram is just to um, help you to plot the histograms. Once you have your data frame and then you choose your variables to, to plot and you choose how big your histogram is and this is help you to plot the distribution, distribution, plot the categories and plot the correlation map okay if you forgot what is a correlation map you can just uh, google and correlation map is 
um, you know, how to visualize your correlation between um, variables. Okay. Okay, so the third thing is we need our data. We need our Titanic data. Okay, and I have attached a trained CSV and a test CSV. Okay, so normally when you enter a competition for uh, machine learning, they will give you a training set and a testing set. So what they want you to do is they want you to train your model using the training data and test it using the testing data. Okay, so uh, for now I will read um, the train and test CSV. So to read the CSV, just do pd dot read. Oh, sorry. And just copy the um, URL. So I call this train and I call this test. Okay. Okay, the next thing I want to do I'll just have a have a quick look at uh, my train data sets. Okay, so I have like the name of the passenger, um, the uh, the sex, the age, what ticket it holds, what's the fare, etc. So it's not a very um very very wide data set. Okay, and you can use dot shape to see the size of it. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to combine the two data sets. I just paste, paste it like this. So if I do train test, pd dot concat. Okay, that's how you paste the two data sets. Okay, just to bear in mind, if you want to paste two things, they have to have the identical columns. Okay. So that's how you paste the two data sets. Yep. Or you forgot to put the the this this ring. Okay, everyone. Survived. Oh, true. Cause oh, cause the um. All right, the test data set. You're not supposed to know the answer. Okay, so that's why the test data set has less column. Uh, hold on. I'll see. Train dot columns. Um. 
Yeah, that's that's the um, ground truth. Okay. So if you do train dot survived, you will see uh, who actually survived um, in the uh, in the Titanic. Okay. Uh, you can still combine the two uh, data sets by doing your uh, survive um, dot tail. Okay, so some some part of of your data sets will have uh, NA okay. because you're not supposed to know the answer. Okay, so <laughs> the next one is quite silly. So um, check if Jack and Rose is on Titanic. Okay, um, yeah, they are too real to be a fictional character. How would you do? How how can you check whether or not um, Jack and Rose is on Titanic? So you have go back to your full data sets, and you have. All the passenger names you can do full dot name and you can find a list of passengers and then there are a, a few things a few ways to check uh, whether or not they're on the uh, on Titanic so first thing is a for loop uh, if you forgot, I'll just say um, you can try this. Just say if Jack is in uh, if you check this, it's gonna be false, right? Just simply checking whether or not Jack is in this string. So you can do. For I in sorry, I'm sorry. For I in full dot name, and then you check whether or not Jack is in I, and then you do a bracket out of it, and then. You can see a lot of force. Just do a sum out of all of them. Okay, so we found uh, one check out of all the passengers. Okay, and now we want to know if that's the person we want to search for. So you can do full dot name dot apply and do lambda. check in X and again this will create uh, a boolean okay this is let's say like whether check is here and then you can check by this Sorry. Okay, and sadly this is not the Jack we want because it's like Dr. Arthur Jackson Okay, again if you change it to uh, rows and you found a lot of rows but uh, this is not the rows we're looking for Does that make sense? Or why is it this, good? Why are we actually apply for this package as well? Or you don't have to, you don't really have to do apply. Yeah, you can no, do... Just go for a list, can't we just get the list? Yeah, you can do this. And then... And then just ignore this line. It's the same. So remember for uh, pandas, if you want to filter the row, you create a string of boolean. 
to filter. Okay, but this this is not very important. This is just a uh, silly questions, just to test whether or not um, you can do pandas. <clears throat> okay. So um, shall we move on, or do do I need to explain the steps again? Okay, so the next question is we have to understand our data, right? Before we build a model, we should play around and visualize some of the data. So um, let's say for, um, I want to look for the um, relationship between survival and the target variable. So because our data is called foo, you do foo.head and you can have a peep, peek at the first few lines. Okay. And so you do foo.head. And then we have a look at the variable descriptions. So let's get a sense of our variable, uh, the class type, um, we know we're working with uh, 1,300 um, observation of 12 variables. Okay. So this is the uh, description. So we have a survive column, which is whether or not uh, the, the passenger survived. We have the ticket number. We have the uh, female or non-female or male. And we have uh, the passenger class. Uh, class 1, class 3, and then we have the name, we have the, the fare, and we have which cabin, and we have the age. Okay. Um, one handy um, function I usually use is uh, value counts. So you, if you want to go to survived, you want to count how many survived and how many died. You can do value counts. Okay, and you see 549 of them died and 342 survived. And you can also do full dot um, the class and this is the distribution for, for your cabin. Um, like how many of them are in the first class, how many of them are in the third class. Okay. I think you can do something like full dot plot. Uh, you might not be able to, to, to do it this way. Okay, never mind. Let's not plot it first. Uh, everyone understand the value counts, okay? Okay, then the next uh, step is look at some key information about the variables. Okay, numerical value is one, is like integer, and then you have categorical value that is like the string one. So, um, how, how can we describe the data frame uh, quickly? You basically do full dot info, sorry, info bracket, and then you can quickly see uh, which columns are uh, integer, which one is um, objects, okay, and then you can do uh, full dot describe. Okay, now I can see the um, statistics for the data sets. Okay. I just have a brief feeling the well the average age is twenty nine years old. Um, okay. So the youngest. 
Okay, the youngest person is 0 0.17 years old. So that's that's a baby. Okay. And then the oldest person is 80 years old. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. So for this uh, SIBSP, is how many siblings do you have uh, on the on the Titanic? So probably the more siblings you have, um, I don't know, intuitively is less chance of surviving because you probably wait for your siblings and don't go on the survival um, on the ships. Safety. Yeah, all the siblings safe. Yeah, <laughs> <coughs> yeah we, we never know. The data will tell us um, the relationships. Okay. <coughs> So then the next thing is, you probably still can't get a feeling of how does it correlate to each other. So the next thing is to uh, plot a heat map of correlations. Okay, uh, I put a link of how to do correlation matrix using uh, pandas. So um, stack overflow is very handy. You just do plt dot match show and then dot correlations. So let's see if this works. Okay, problem. So if you saw such a case like this, so it plot what map plot lib and but it doesn't show up the um, image, just do plt.show. Right, and it shows you a uh, correlation heat map. Okay, but this one Okay, this one hides all the columns, so probably we can find a better, better way to do it. Okay, one numerical way to do it is to do this: full dot c o r r. Okay, now we can have a look at the correlations. So siblings and survival rate. Okay, it's negatively correlated. So more siblings, the more chance you die. Okay. Um, and then we have class and survived. Okay, so the lower the class, which means class one, then the higher chance you have for surviving. Um, we're missing a bit some of the information, which is um, the sex. Okay. So if you want to do uh, sorry, PD to dummies. Oh, sorry. Uh, I forgot how to <laughs> pandas to dummies. Uh, get dummies. If you do this. Sorry, I, I shouldn't do this <laughs> because I'm generating a very big uh, dummy variable for every name. Okay, so, okay. So, like my original thought is I want to check uh, female or male, the survival rates. So probably I can do um, sex and then survive. Okay, so if you do it this way, um, so being a female, you have a positive correlation of surviving, but for all the guys, uh, it's a higher chance for you to die. Okay, so they they are being very gentlemen on <laughs> on Titanic, proven by data. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so, <clears throat> okay, let's further explore the relationship between the features and survival of passengers, because all we want is we find the, um, the pattern, how does it contribute to the survival rate. So, uh, can you plot the relationship between age and survival, and try to use the helpers functions? 
Okay, so now this time I'm gonna use the help us functions. Um, let's go way back up, and then let's plot the distribution. Uh, DF variant target. So we have four, and we want to find uh, distribution between age and survived. Sorry, plot distribution is not defined. So if you wanna use the helper function, just first define the functions. Plt dot show. Okay, that's your distribution between age and survival. Okay, the blue one is the distribution for people who died, and the uh, the, the other color is the one who survived. Okay, so if you are a bit younger then you have a um, slightly higher chance of dying than surviving. Okay. So, um, if you think of it this way, probably the younger people um, have less chance of being in the first class. That might be the reason. Or is there any conclusion that you can draw from these distributions? The blue one is the one who died, and this one is the one who survived. And the children won't be able to survive as normal high school. Um, actually, it means the younger person is more likely to survive. Yeah. The youngest one. Because uh, they tell the children. Children and the and the and the woman. Women to get out. To go on to a lifeboat. Yes. Yeah. But you know all the um like twenty years old men. They will be blocked in the third class and can't go can't go on the lifeboats. Okay, and then okay, okay. Now now we have some feeling of how how the data behaved, and then okay. In, investigate other numerical values. Uh, just plot the distribution of fare of passengers who survived or did not survive. So now, just use the same functions, and then do fares. Oops, I think it's fair. Okay, so, okay, this is more, more clear. So people who pay less, has much higher chance of dying. While people who pay a lot, uh, never dies. Okay, <laughs> I think that that's reflecting the reality. <laughs> um, okay. All right. So now, now we have in mind that the fare it's probably a good factor that contribute whether or not you die. All right. So now we can um, look at the categorical data. So if you look back to your data sets, full, uh, you have something called uh, embarked. So I think it means um, where you come from or where did you get abroad on, on the ships. So you either get abroad from Southampton, Queenstown or this is Cherbourg, okay? And just check the um, distributions where they come from. So majorities are from Southampton. Okay, so okay, Queenstown sounds like a posh area. So let's see, let's see how how the um, survival rate um, changes. So I have to copy the uh, helpers functions as well. Uh, let's go back up. Okay, so plot categories. D, F, cat, and target. D, 
df. Okay, I want to check embarked and survived. Okay, plt dot show. Okay, so it means those who went to those who came from Southampton has a higher chance of dying, and those from um, Cherbourg and Queenstown has a slightly higher chance of surviving. Okay, that that is probably uh, correlated to your um, ticket as well. So if you come from Southampton, probably you are poor people and you are in class of three of the ships. Okay. Okay. So the function I got is just plot categories, uh, full, embarked, and survived. Okay, just to bear in mind, this um, plotting function only work in this data sets. Okay, so if you are using a different data sets, you probably have to write your own one. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so question 12 to 15, investigate the categorical variables. Um, so basically, just repeat the same steps and plot for all the variables. So let's say for sex. Okay, now you can see being a female is a huge advantage uh, on, the, on Titanic. P class. Just put plot categories and then the two um, variables you want to check. And then you do uh, plot categories, uh, passing your class, survived. So class one um, people has 60% chance of surviving, while class three people have like uh, 20 something percent survival rate. Okay, the more interesting one, uh, the siblings and survival rate. So if you have four siblings on ships, uh, okay, you still have 20% chance of surviving, but if you have eight siblings, your chance of surviving is zero. Okay. I think that, again, if you think about it um, intuitively, probably the more siblings you have, the more likely you are from a, a poor family, I think in those times, because usually rich family don't have many kids. So, yep, if you're zero, that does mean you don't have any siblings on the ships, okay? And then, I forgot what this means, P-A-L-C-H. I forgot what this um, variable means, so let's search for a patch. I think we have a we have explanations. Oh, so the number of parents and children are brought in. Okay. So, okay, so if you have a lot of child abroad, or, well, you can only have two parents. Um, okay, so basically, if you have families abroad on, on Titanic's, so, well, actually, if you have uh, three families, you're more likely to survive. So probably, well, the family help out for each other. But the, um, the variance is huge. Yeah, the variance is huge. So probably, um, well, if the sample size is very small, then the variance would be huge. Yeah. So probably you don't have a lot of... Um, family with size of 3, but we can check. So we can do uh, full.parch.valueCounts. Ok, 
Okay, so the variance is huge because you have sample size of uh, three. Okay. Yeah, but the majority it's uh, single. Not single, but like without the family. Okay. Right, so I think we have a better sense of how the data behave. So let's look at the uh, data preparations. So one key thing is transform categorical data to dummy variables. Okay, so the first thing is to uh, transform male as one and female to zero. Okay, you can you can do it the hard way, which is do like full dot sex and then you can write a very complicated for loop like um, i for i in if i equals male else zero uh, yeah, you can do it this way okay so that's basically a for loop uh, with an if else. If the person is a male, then you put one, or else you put zero. Okay, that's one way of doing it. Okay, the better way of doing it is just do full and then sex and then do uh, PD to dummies get dummies okay then you have like sex female and sex male okay hmm. but I think for um, okay for this uh, particular problem let's just call it um, this way so I created a new um, new data sets using the for loop. So now I created a new uh, columns with males equals one and then females equals zero. <coughs> okay. And then well the next one is to turn full dot impact. Uh, to dummy variables and then yeah just do the same thing pd dot get dummies and then you can do um, full dot impact thing. okay then you transform uh, the variable this way So I'll just call this embarked. Okay, I'll probably I'll call this sex. Uh, okay, again I'll just transform all the category ca category to um, dummy variables here. Uh, P class. And I'll just call it P class. Okay, so I have my uh, P class as dummy variables, and I have my uh, embarked as uh, dummy variables. Okay. All right. So once we uh, transform our um, dummy variables, uh, then it here comes the annoying part for for the data which is a feeling missing value. So if you um, want to look at here, you can see a lot, lot of NA. Okay. And then you can do replace all the NA in H by filling it with the mean. Okay, how to do it? Um, 
So full dot age dot min. Oops. Uh, full dot min. Okay, I forgot how to do this. So uh, np dot min. Um. Okay, mp dot mean bracket full dot mean. I think this way you have to do dot drop and a. Oh, sorry, I know why. Fill and a. That's not right. Okay, that's right. Okay. So you do full dot h dot fill na, and then just fill it with the um, the mean. Okay. Okay, or you can just replace all the NA with the mean. You can just do full dot fill NA with full dot mean. Okay, uh, except for cases like this, because this is uh, not numerical value, so it's not gonna uh, fill the N NA. Okay, I'll just call Call it full. Okay, and then okay, and then we enter a feature engineering um, phrase. So we have to create a new variables. Okay, because um, we want we want to win the comp competition. So we want to ex extract um, extra value from the um, data. So let's say you have looked in the name. Okay, if you if you have a scan through, so we have some Mr. and Mrs. But we also have some like Sir or um, like Junior or Professor, etc. So um, you can transform all these to like titles. Mr. Mrs. and Doctor. And to do this, I have a dictionary for uh, all the title. See? So you have, if you're royalty, you are, you are called like the, the Countess. And if you're a master, you are called the Master. And if you are the royalty, you are called the Lady. Okay? So if you have some title, it prob probably means you're from from a wealthy family. Uh, sorry. <coughs> so okay, just try to count how many Mister, Miss, and Doctor on a boat. Let's see how to do it. Okay, using the mapping table, merge the categories into a bigger categories. Mrs. Mrs. and Mr. to Miss, and convert all title on title, title. Okay, I think... Okay, let me <laughs> create an empty data frame called title. Okay, I'll do this part first. So we have name. And then you can do dot apply. Lambda x, and then you split it by comma, and then you get the second item. All right, and if you want to get the title, 
uh, you can do a pretty complicated split again by the dots and then get the first item okay now I created a um, column full of all the titles okay, so if you look look at the name okay you can see uh, the name has three parts so you have your um, have your name and then you have your title and you have your family name okay now I want to extract everything in between okay so the first thing I have to split is split by a comma if I split every string by a comma and then se select the second item I get everything on the right if I split by full stop again I get everything on the left okay so what I actually do is okay, I do lambda x lambda x means I'm creating um, a temporary variable okay. and then x dot split which means I split by something if I do split by comma it becomes like this okay now I choose the second item so I put one it becomes like this and on here I can keep on doing split and I split by full stop it becomes this and I select the first item and it becomes Mr. Mrs. etc and then I can call this uh, data frame called title Uh, this part might be might be uh, too complex for you. Um, yeah, but the more you practice, the more you learn how to tackle this. And then just do a distribution on all the um, all the titles. Okay, so you can see you have some royal family on. Titanic. Uh, you don't normally see a sir or a lady. We even have one captain, which is the captain. And then we have some masters and some uh, normal people like Mr. and Mrs. Okay. And then, okay, probably, okay, we can, maybe we can skip the steps not to make it too complex and then actually I think I can try full okay do full dot title dot map okay yeah let's skip our uh, question 21 for now Okay, so at least we created a new um, new column of information. Okay. okay, I'll do the rest quickly. Um, and then the same thing for for the data sets. You can um, you now you can dig deep into your data and try to extract information like the ticket. Um, in here you can see like which room it belongs to and this is like an extra source of information and okay let's skip all the um, all the question 3 and then we'll jump straight to the um, modeling okay so but let me walk through the, the logic so in here you want to extract the ticket class from the ticket number and in here you want to um, create a, a column called family size which you combine your uh, siblings and your parent and child's uh, data sets okay so now you have a uh, final data sets 
and you can or cannot choose uh, your variables. You can decide which variables to add into your model, because now you have a, a huge set of data. Okay, so now I created like um, like a title, and to make things uh, less complicated, I can do drop name, because the name no longer have any information. So, if you drop a column, you put one. Okay, now I drop all the names. Uh, if access is zero, it's row. If access is one, it means column. Okay. So, um, okay, so now I want to create uh, my uh, train x, train y, and you know the test x, test test y. So uh, I'll do this part for you. So we have our full data sets and our let's create the dummy variables. PD dot get dummies, and then we have full. Okay, let's call it full. Let's call it DF. And then if you go to survived. Okay, and then if you drop, uh, let's say you drop all the NA, it should give you um, all the training sets, I think. Okay, so let's call this a train. And then if you want to find your train Y, that's the column with the survived, right? Right, so, sorry. Oh, sorry. This has to be. Okay, this is my train Y. And then my train X is everything that is uh, not part of the survived. Okay, so I'll do columns, find all the columns, and you can do this one is a bit tricky. So you do I for I in columns, which I is not equals to survived. Okay. If I not need boost. Okay, so now I have all the um, all the columns that doesn't equal survived. Okay, so this is this is my uh, train X. If I do it this way. Okay. So this becomes train X. Okay, good. Now we have our train X and train Y. Okay, so basically uh, the shape we always look for, the target and the features. Uh, okay, train X. Let's put a capital letter. We can do. I, I didn't follow strictly how they how they want me to do it, so this uh, variable didn't work. Um, but now, okay, finally, we can build our model. Okay, I'll, I'll finish in five minutes. So, <clears throat> to build the model, okay, just okay, just like how we did it. Create an empty data set, an uh, empty model. Uh, I didn't import this. You do ensemble dot gradient boosting classifier, 
and then you do KNN. I, I didn't input this model, so never mind. Okay, so now all we need to do is just do model dot fit train x and then train y. Oops. Train. Okay, something went wrong with my x. Okay. Okay. Um, let's say in the ideal case it works. For now, I, I don't I don't want to debug it in the class. Okay. So um, okay. Let's say we we reach the steps and we define all the MT model, and we can check it one by one. And then you can do your cross validation score and see which one get the highest. And then. Okay, this one is the one I always talk about. So you can actually do a, um, a functions that loop through all the models and find the highest score. Okay. Um, okay, maybe I'll just take a, take a video of how it works and then I'll post it on YouTube. And you guys can have a look. Okay, so okay, so next class is gonna be um, workshop, and hopefully you will come to your class with your data sets. Okay, so hope you enjoy your uh, Easter holiday. And thanks. Thank you. Thank you.